Hi, I'm Rachel and thank you for pre-ordering my book. So this video is meant to be supplemental to the book and I'm going to walk through all the steps of making the pair of Mary Janes. And the reason I chose the Mary Janes for the video is they have some components that are a little bit like shoe making and then the back half is a little bit more like sandal making. So hopefully we'll cover almost every technique in this video and you can use it as a reference um, to look up things like scratching or gluing or um, shaping leather soles, anything you should be able to find. I'll, I'll try to make a directory of all the different tasks that I do in the video. So please use it um, as much as you can just for a visual demonstration of all the things I cover in the book. Um, Mary Janes, I think technically are any shoe with usually like a round toe and a buckling strap. Um, in my book, um, they have any covered toe like this with a kind of sandal-y back. So something that's open at the heel and then buckling straps. So that's what we're gonna make today. In fact, this is the one in the book. Um, so we're just gonna learn to make a covered toe, an open back, and how to attach a buckling strap. Of course, if you want to, you can not do a buckle, but do a stud closure instead, or you can do laces. Um, you can connect the laces to the covered toe. Um, lots of different improvisations can happen, but um, for now, we're just gonna build this sandal from start to finish. Uh, so I wanted to mention that my technique is uh, different from traditional shoemaking in a few ways. Um, one of the ways is I'm just stretching um, one layer of leather, or sometimes two if they're lined, around a last. And because it's vegetable tan leather is one of the components, it's going to hold the shape um, in the process of wet forming around the last. And that's uh, how you build a 3D shoe. Um, in traditional shoemaking, there's often usually three layers. There's um, the lining leather, a stiffened toe form and a heel cup, and um, then there's the exterior leather. And I find that all, lasting all three of those in succession is a lot for a beginner to grapple with. So I hope you like my technique um, and if you master it and really enjoy it, um, you should work on trying to, um, you know, work with all three of the layers eventually. But I find that this is totally adequate to make comfortable, good-looking, wearable shoes, and um, so I'm going to show you my way. All right, so here is uh, my collection of tools. We'll begin with a pair of lasts in roughly your size. So I'm a size eight and a half, so I have this pair of nine um, wooden lasts. That's gonna be fine. I can always use these and then take my pieces and kind of um, shrink them down a little to fit me uh, correctly. So I usually add a layer of leather to the bottom of my last to give me just a little more volume um, to the shapes that we create. You'll see why that would come in handy later. But those are my lasts. And then pencil, pen, sharp little scissors, utility knife, any straight edge or ruler. Um, for the lasting process, I like these chain nose pliers. So pointy needle nose, but flat on the inside and with little texture for grabbing. And then a hammer with, and you're gonna use the flat side, a rotary hole punch, so you have lots of different hole size options for leather. Uh, all for scratching, marking, um, all sorts of little things. 
And then some nails that will go into your heels and keep them locked in place. Almost any nails will work, small ones. There's notes in the book. Um, and then optionally, if you have a shoe anvil or are considering buying one, that's really handy, but I'll show you what to do if you don't have one. And then a little punch, oval shaped punch for the buckles, um, but that's another thing we can work around. And anytime you use a punch, you'll want a wooden mallet. So those are all the tools. All right, materials wise, these are the ingredients for the shoes that we're going to use up. Um, tools last forever, materials, we're gonna use it up. So um, some thick leather for the footbeds, uh, the, the leather you're gonna actually stand on inside the shoe. Some thinner leather for your uppers, so you'll need more of that, about three square feet for this project. Um, I'm going to use up some not great leather and I'm just going to try to find the nicer areas to work with, so we'll see how that works out. Um, and then stiff, heavy leather soles for your outsoles. This is also leather, um, just stiffened with, um, you know, the tanning process makes it harder. And then stacked heels, hopefully you're lucky enough to just buy some pre-stacked leather heels. Um, like these. Also, if you can't buy any, um, you can just stack layers of this kind of leather. Um, I did three with a little rubber on the bottom, and then you'd want to sand that front edge before joining it to the sole. Anyway, they can be made by hand. Blank paper to um, make up your own patterns and um, make variations on the patterns I provided. And masking tape, of course, this is very handy. You're gonna need two buckles for this pair and about six, maybe more rivets, at least six. And these are called double cap rivets, speed rivets. They're the extra small size. And then a bunch of lasting nails. So any tiny nails, super sharp, um, for securing the leather to the bottom of the last. Um, some water-based glue, because we're working with all leather, so we can use the water-based uh, leather glue. Um, it's usually white, and we'll talk about that later. And then optionally some leather conditioner to rub onto the entire shoe when it's finished to give it a little bit of weather protection and a darker patina. And then I think the actual patterns are part of the materials list, so here are the patterns from the book. Um, that's all. Okay, the first thing is you'll want to take a pattern from the last you're working with to be your sole pattern. So even if the size is a little off from your foot, let's just start by tracing the last, and you just need one of them. So I'll start at the toe. and then kind of lift the paper up to meet all those shapes. Like that. And then I'll cut this out and I'll look at it with my one of my feet standing on top of it and I'll show you what to look for. Okay, so I cut it out, I labeled one side right and the other side left. You only need one of these patterns. And then I'm just going to put my foot on it like this. And it's okay if your big toe is sort of drifting off of the pattern because the shoe itself is going to kind of just tuck everything in nicely. So don't worry if there's like a few millimeters of drift there. Um, and then it's nice to have a little extra, like half inch in the toe and a little extra in the back. This is probably more than I need, so I might trim down the pattern a little bit. Um, but the width looks good. You don't need very much extra in the width, almost none. Just a little extra in the length. So I'm going to, um, I'm happy with this pattern for my foot. There's a lot of adjustments we can make as we move forward. 
I am gonna just trim off about a centimeter from the back since that was a size nine last and I'm an eight and a half. So I'm just gonna get rid of a little bit back there. Um, so this will be my footbed pattern, the leather I stand on inside the shoe. Okay, so like I said, this will be our footbed. I'm gonna label that. And I'm gonna trim that extra off now, because what's the point of cutting everything too large? And then to make the outsole pattern, so the very bottom of the shoe, we want it just a little bit bigger because it's gonna cover everything on the bottom. Also, there's a little bit of shrinkage when we shape the outsole. So I'm gonna trace this same shape. And I'll just go around and add a few millimeters, like two millimeters, all the way around. You know, give it like a, a little halo. And you're gonna need more in the length than the width. So just small halo on the sides, slightly longer in the length. And this is gonna get sanded eventually, so it doesn't need to be totally perfect. So I'm gonna label this outsole, and this side's the right, and the flip side is the left, and I'm gonna cut on the larger line. Okay, so then um, I traced the Mary Jane patterns from the book. So here's a few of the pieces. And now I'm gonna test them on the last I'm working on. So the toe part, for example, you can just kind of drape it over your last, keeping in mind that you want a whole inch all the way around here that's gonna tuck under. Um, so let's look at that. I just crushed the paper down onto the last. Um, so it's definitely enough to cover our last and have, give us enough for the lasting allowance underneath. Um, I guess you just wanna make sure you think this is an attractive shape and that you're happy with this uh, top line here. Um, I think it looks pretty good. Um, maybe just for the sake of a little difference, I'll make a little more of an exaggerated no, I don't like that, Never mind. <laughs> I think I'll leave it as, as is and then we can play with it later. Um, and then let's look at the ankle part. So you can just pretend the last is your foot and drape it around like this. But because the back component of this Mary Jane is more like a sandal, um, we're not gonna really work with the last for this part, we're gonna work with your foot. So you can do this draping on your actual foot just on a low stool or a chair and make sure that it's coming up high but underneath your ankle bone and just make sure that you have enough um, of a tab to fold underneath, like at least an inch, maybe an inch and a half, but you just want enough paper to fold underneath and hold all the glue. So if, you, if these are a little shy, if this was like high on your ankle and that's how you liked it and these weren't long enough, just retrace it and extend these tabs. Also, if these are coming too far forward up here on your foot and overlapping, you would just pinch out a little back here. You could tape that and th that makes the whole thing smaller. Um, and the opposite of that, if, they're, if it's too small for your foot and not coming forward enough, uh, it's sitting back on your ankle, you would just add a piece of paper here to uh, make that extend further forward. So lots of room to play around there. And then these um, little 
straps are going to be the things that hold your buckles. And I'm sure these will fit uh, just about any size, but you can tape these to your paper pattern and play with the angle and make sure the length is good enough for you at this phase. Or we could do that later. <laughs> so I'm gonna move ahead and just use these patterns as is for my shoe and we'll trace and cut those next. All right, let's start by tracing your footbed pattern. So that's the thick leather that's the, gonna be the insole that you stand on. And of course you want to right and a left. So I'm gonna start by fitting my piece in here. I like using a mark, a permanent marker because it leaves a really clear line for me to cut on. It's not hard to see. Okay, and now we're gonna trace that larger outsole pattern on the heavy stiff leather soles. And I like to save myself a little bit of cutting if I can by tucking this curve in to this natural curve here. Right and a left. Sometimes you can fit one in towards one side and get have enough space to get another heel unit here, but it's not quite enough. So I think I'll just Okay, so I'm using this um, four ounce leather for my upper pieces and it's got a lot of flaws, you know, stretch marks, cattle brands, um, maybe scratches. So I'm going to seek out like the most pristine zones to use for my toe straps because those are the most visible pieces of the shoe. So I think this area is kind of nice. I'll tuck this in right about here, keeping in mind the whole lasting allowance area is um, not going to be seen. And the last thing that I need to trace out are two of the long straps and two of the little straps. And instead of sometimes tracing each one and then having to remove all my pen lines, I just like to take a piece of leather with a straight edge. Um, you can establish a straight edge with a ruler. And then I just kind of use the pattern to establish how wide I need this strap to be like this. And then I move that out of the way and I hold this really steadily. And then with a knife I do a light pass and a heavier pass. And then I have this strap um, width that I need and I can cut it down to the length later. Um, and I don't have to fuss with all those, you know, tracing and cutting stuff. So I need another one of those. One for each foot. And I happen to know that any straps that are intended to go through a buckle, you want to err on the smaller side. They need to pass through the buckle really easily. So I sometimes nudge it just a little bit smaller than intended. Like that. And
and then the small one, I can get two out of one of these, so I'll just do another one of these strips and cut it in half. So these will all be ready to play with later. And then I'll cut out the rest of the things I traced. Um, so I wanted to mention that sometimes you'll use the scissors to cut the leather and sometimes a knife. And for the upper leather, which is the thinnest leather you're working with, um, that's a good time to use your scissors. And the scissors are really handy for doing tight inside curves, like this one right here. Um, all curves are, I think, much easier with the scissors. And, but it depends on what you're more comfortable with. If you're well versed with using a knife, maybe you do all your cuts with a knife. Um, no matter what you choose, you just wanna cut on the inside of your line, totally eliminating the line. You're not gonna miss that, you know, millimeter of leather. And this way, you have this clean piece to work with. Um, if you were to cut right on the line, you're just gonna have to recut that whole strip yet again with a um, you know bigger margin of error. So I encourage you to just remove the line from the get-go. You won't miss it. Um, yeah. And consider which lines are going to be seen and which ones won't be seen. This whole area is going to get tucked under the shoe. It's our lasting allowance, so that doesn't matter so much. But this whole thing needs to have no lines showing. Okay, when you're cutting the thick footbed leather, you're going to want to definitely use your knife and you're gonna to have to do several passes to get through such thick leather. So the first pass, you're just going to very lightly trace where you wanna cut, right inside the line. And then you'll go back with a little more force. And then sometimes a third pass will get you all the way through. Like that. And I like to do, do just one sloping cut at a time. So I get that completed and then I can move on to the next area. Light, heavier. slowly separating the piece from the rest.
right? And then cutting your outsole leather is going to be even a little more challenging than the footbed leather. It's just a little thick and stiff, you know? So try to bring as much patience as you can to this step as possible. Um, it helps a little if you get the whole thing wet. So um, I'll show you with and without. So just dry. You would do a light pass, heavier pass, Like that and you'll just slowly chip away at the whole piece and of course it doesn't need to be perfect because this is going to get sanded um, I'll do another This is like 10 ounce um, soling leather. You can buy like seven, eight, which is thinner. and It'll be a lot easier to cut. So that's up to you and your supplier. Um, but now I'll get one wet and show you how it is to cut it wet. It's just a little easier is all, <laughs> but be careful not to slip and be very, very cautious with your fingers, please. Alternatively, if you're lucky enough to have this kind of tool, a leather cutting tool called a five-in-one or sometimes a three-in-one, Landis is the brand that's most common. Um, they're found in a lot of garages across America, <laughs> um, on eBay, and they're very handy for cutting thick leather. Um, I'll show you how it works. It's like a giant can opener. The blade is right here, and you just push it through and guide your leather like that. Ask your uncles if they have one of these. <laughs> so I just soaked the heavy leather outsoles under the faucet for about 15 seconds each. Um, so both sides are fully saturated. And now I want to give them some shape so they're a little more interesting than just like a flat uh, shoe, okay? So where I like to begin is I like to push up the arch so the arch for me is like a third here, third here, third here, and then the tiptoe. And the arch comes about halfway <laughs> in. So I want that little half moon shape to come up as much as possible. So I just start with my fingers massaging it and pulling this up while pressing around it down at the same time to create kind of a contrast. And you can actually make this shape um, with the edge of a sink, you know, by rubbing this on the round part of a sink. Um, or I could use almost anything to help me um, press the arch up like that. So once I've gotten that started, we can slide your heel blocks in place underneath. And we want these heel blocks to 
just line up with the back of the sole shape. And we want the ball of the toes to be grounded while the heel is grounded, but maintaining that arch lift. Okay. And then I like to add a little toe spring as well. I think it looks good and it ke keeps your foot in place where it should be. So I do like a whole half inch at least of, of toe spring. So at the widest part of the toe box, that's what you want the most grounded. And then it begins to lift from there. And then just over exaggerate that arch. And make sure that when it's on the heel block back here, that the toes, the toe area is like completely grounded. All those things at once. <laughs> it's easier than it sounds. So, united with the block here, arch lifting here. This whole area is grounded and toe spring. And then you just want to line them up symmetrical, look at all the curves, make sure they're the same as each other, and you may even want to stand on these while they're damp and make sure all these curves are correlating to your own feet. You might like a higher arch, less arch, you might need your toe spring to be less, I don't know. But at this point I'm happy with them and I'm going to let them dry overnight um, or for a few hours in front of a heater until they're super stiff. All right, so the next uh, step is shaping our toes uh, using a process called lasting. My technique is a little bit different from traditional techniques. Um, we're gonna get this vegetable tan leather wet, like soaking wet but not dripping, and then we're going to, um, you know, blend it over the last and secure it on the bottom with nails. But before we do that, we want to make sure um, that we're that it's landing in the place we want it to land. <laughs> so uh, you might want to mark on your last somewhere with a little dash with a pen or a pencil um, how high up you want your piece to land. So you know, depending on the look you're going for, you might want it to fall back quite far back here. Of course, you're going to need enough material here, or you might want a really small toe shape like this. Um, that actually looks kind of nice. Um, let's go for something in the middle, like right about there. And we can always change this top line later if we want. Um, so I'll just make a little dash right there. And this will of course give us plenty of lasting allowance. We just need about an inch all around and that, that we have. So now that I made that dash, I'm going to replicate it on my other last. And if you're like me, you might just eyeball it. Or if you're more precise, you could measure from the toe to here with measuring tape. Okay, so um, let's just begin and I'll talk us through it. Um, I'm going to dip this into some water. You can just run it under the sink if you like. And you want to spread it so that there's no air bubbles. It's just really smooth on the last. And you also want it to be even from right to left, you know, so you don't want it skewing one way or the other. So I like the look of that. I'm going to hold it tight and flip it upside down. And I'm going to start working my lap. Um, ideally, you'd have a clean apron to work on. Mine is less than clean. <laughs> and I'm going to start by putting a nail in these two widest parts. Um, 
widest spots around the toe box. So these nails are sharp, so you should be able to just stick it in manually. All right, so first nail. I'm kind of cradling the whole thing in between my legs. Um, and I put my nails about a centimeter or half an inch from the edge. And think of these as like little tent stakes. They're just holding everything in place. So once I have those two, I'm gonna do one at the tip top. Um, I'm going to grab the leather with my pliers and pull it straight back. And I'm gonna put one about a centimeter or three-eighths of an inch from the top. Like that. And I know it's awkward to hammer into your own lap, but it's just the way, it's just the way it's done. Um, so now you have all this extra material that we have to get to fold in. And think about it like you want to use it up as soon as possible. You don't want to save the problems for later. Um, you'll get a sense for what I mean as you do it. But because we have a little more uh, lasting allowance leather than we needed. I might trim just like a little bit off to give us more space. Like that. Okay. Um, so the idea is to take this extra leather and pleat the leather as you go around the corner or the toe, the round toe. And I'm going to intentionally try to create these big wrinkles but only allow them to exist on the underside of what I'm working on. I never want these wrinkles to appear on the top side or like above this horizon line. And most shoemakers use a hammer and pliers in one called lasting pliers, but for some reason I just like tic tacking between pliers and a hammer. So it's just something weird about me. Um, so I'm taking this, all this extra, and I'm actually trying to get it in as close as I can to use up all that extra leather. And I'm going back and forth and back and forth. And you need to be careful when you're working with vegetable tan leather because um, these steel nails and honestly all the steel tools can stain the leather when it's wet like this. So I only allow the nails, the hammer, anything to touch anything on the underside, nothing on the uh, this side of the wet leather. So let's check in and see how it's going. So the wrinkles we're creating are all on the bottom side. So if I kind of use, put my thumb here, you can't see them on the top. That's important. And I'm, as I progress around this tight curve, it gets easier and easier. And you can just kind of pull the leather straight back like this. because there's less excess material to deal with. And 
And if a nail comes out while you're working or it goes awry, just toss it to the side and redo it. You can redo any that aren't tight enough. And then you don't need them quite so tight as you continue backwards. It's really, they need to be tight together and frequent, mostly at the toe. So I'm going to keep going. I might just do these two back here now. Oh, it's dull. So once you have all your nails uh, in place and it's holding it tightly against the last, we can check out the top and it looks really good. But there's still some wrinkles that are, you know, closely approaching the edge that are making me a little nervous. So I'm going to use my tools to kind of force those back. So I can keep this in between my legs and I'm going to use the hammer to tap the nails kind of inward to get them out of my way. Okay. And then I'm going to very carefully only tap the bottom flat part of the last and I'm going to kind of bring the wrinkles down a level. You can also do this with your pliers and kind of send these back, even adding more nails if you wish. this nice flat edge around there and uh, now I can do my second one I'm going to try to get it to be as faithful to this shape as possible and I'm going to let these dry overnight uh, as well as the outsoles Alright, so here's the two toe shapes that I've lasted and they look almost totally symmetrical to me. Um, I don't get too fixated on them being the same at this point because often when we take these off of the forms and try them on, I often decide like I might want to change this line to be a little bit shallower or, you know, different on the outside, you know, trim some way. So that's a, something we can still correct for. Um, so if you find on your project that one is skewing a little more than the other, we can fix it later. Um, but you do want to just make sure that all of your wrinkles are really tucked under um, so that when you see them from this angle that they look really crisp and clean. And 
the leather should be really tight against the last everywhere. Um, like this. And we're just going to let them dry overnight or in front of a heater. Um, same with the outsoles. Uh, so if you enjoy this process and find you're, you're doing it again and again, um, something I sometimes like to do is once you've stretched the um, toe piece, say, and it comes off the last, if you want to create your own custom little um, insert to line the toe further, you can take really thin 2-3 vegetable tan leather and last the same shape but a little smaller, um, like not quite so the same exact shape but you know smaller, um, and last it inside out, let it dry, cut it off, and then you can glue it on the inside of your original piece, if that makes sense. And it's a way to make your own little um, toe puff that's perfectly sized to your last and the pair that you're working with. Um, so sometimes I do that. Okay, so the one thing we can do now while everything's drying is um, put our buckles on the small straps uh, so we can use those later. And you're going to want to mark just a little dash about an inch back. So I'll just mark that, mark that, and then we're going to punch out a little oval here and that's where the buckle will latch on to. Um, so I'm going to do two different techniques. One, uh, I'm just going to cut these using your hole punch and your knife to show you how to do it the simple way. And then if you have a punch and a wooden mallet, I'll show you how to do it that way too. So first way is the rotary hole punch on the um, second to smallest hole. Okay, so if you wanna just manually cut this little oval for the buckle, you'll put a little scrap leather behind it. I'm going to punch a hole on one side of the dash and the other side of the dash like that and then I'm going to connect these it's like you're making uh, cutting slots very carefully so from one end of the dot to the next stopping short then again then again and then the other side to the other side stopping short and I'm going to flip it around to complete these cuts so that you don't cut too far. Like that. So now I have a little oblong shape. And then you can put the tongue of the buckle through that shape and bend this. So that oval becomes like a little track that the tongue of the buckle uses for mobility. Does that make sense? And then you fold this part back on itself and we're going to place a rivet right back there to hold the buckle in place. I like to put my rivet just right behind the bar here. So any closer and it's kind of hard to hammer it, the rivet, and any further away and the buckle might jump off its track. So I just put it you know, a few millimeters behind the bar. And then I think the ideal hole size for setting a rivet is the third to smallest, like three millimeters. And you're going to punch a hole through both layers this time. Like that. And then grab the rivet. There's going to be a post and a little mushroom cap. Um, the post is going to go on the bottom. The mushroom cap snaps on like that. 
and then we're going to hammer that super flat. So ideally you'd hammer it over an anvil. If you don't have an anvil, you could probably do it over a table leg or the floor, concrete floor, um, or plastic surface, but I'll use an anvil. So just get the buckle out of your way. Can you see? And then I like to not use a rivet setting tool, just hammer it flat. So you go through an awkward phase until it's super flat. Just like that. And then when you're done, you could trim this a little shorter if you like that. But now these are ready to add to your shoes later. Okay, and then if you do have a, a punch that's in the shape of an oval, you would just place your punch over your dash mark, grab a wooden or a rawhide mallet, and it really, sometimes if your tool isn't super sharp, it helps to rock it back and forth while you hit it to get it to bite through. Like that. And that's an easy way to um, make your oval for the buckle to fit onto. Like that. All right, hi again. So I waited overnight and <clears throat> the toe shapes that we lasted should be completely dry. Um, it's now the morning, so it's not as dry maybe as I would like. It's still a little damp on the underside, but it's still fine to work with. The top is totally bone dry, um, and they look really good and symmetrical for now. Um, so we're ready to take the nails out and start playing with the shapes. Before I do that, I wanted to talk a little about what, the, what this process is called, because um, I kind of skipped through it. Um, this is a process that's just called wet lasting, and only vegetable tan leather will um, stretch, take a shape, and keep that shape. Any other processed leathers, like anything with a lot of oil in it, anything chrome tanned, um, any garment leathers, they won't be able to get wet and then hold their shape. They're just too stretchy and they've been manipulated too much. So you have to use these natural vegetable tan leathers to do this type of thing. So if you want like a suede or a color on the exterior of your shoes, you can just line um, a thin garment leather with a thin vegetable tan leather and it'll still wet last just as well. Um, and you would do that before you last it, you know? So you'd line the leathers, uh, cut them down to size, and then do this process with the vegetable tan on the inside. Um, so yeah, just be sure that you're working with the right leather to do this, and you should be able to get a nice clear shape. And then um, it, they will like wrinkle and kind of adapt to your feet with wear. Um, so you want to use a thick enough one so that it's resilient and holds its shape. Um, but for beginners, it'll be easier to do this process and get a really clean edge with a thinner leather. So I would start with like a three, four, four ounce leather and maybe stick around that zone until you get a feel for it. Um, yeah, but now um, let's take out the nails. All right, so now you get to just pull out all of these nails. You're not going to reuse them, um, so just go for it. And I find it's a little easier to twist them out rather than pulling them straight out. Whatever works. So I've taken out all of the nails and now we have these 
lumpy wrinkles to deal with and I'm gonna just slice them off so that it's fairly flat on the bottom and that's something you want to be ultra careful about doing <sighs> so I'll show you all my tricks if you're really scared you can get a scissors and kind of like cut triangles around most of these um, but I will show you how I do it with a knife uh, but we just want to make that flat so we can start playing with these. So I'm going to do it in a seated position right now. So I like to roll out my knife kind of long, about four blades long. And I like to work in my lap between my legs. For me, that's the most secure place. So it's kind of against my belly. And then my non-dominant hand is below this horizon line here. It's down here. So there's no danger of cutting myself, or at least in theory. And then I'm going to take the knife right where the wrinkles start to bulge out and kind of do a sawing motion. And you're just getting rid of all the upstanding stuff. And ideally, you'd be leaving like at least a centimeter around the perimeter of uh, leather. like that. So you don't need it to be perfectly flat because later we can skive these ultra flat, but right now it's flat enough to um, play with and make sure it fits correctly. Okay, so now that you've trimmed all the wrinkles away, we can slip these off the forms. If they're a little damp on the inside still, mine are dry, um, you might just want to slip them back on and give them more dry time or keep them off and let them dry. Um, but since these are dry, we can... Um, well, I was about to put them onto the footbeds, but let's just look at them together and make sure they're symmetrical because if one is like longer than the other, we would trim it down now. Um, but it also might be something you want to check out on your foot uh, style wise to see where you want this to end. So play around with these. Um, slide your foot into it. See if any of these areas are extending too far. I would say they're looking pretty equal. Maybe I'll tape them on to look at it. So the first taping I do, I just follow the natural edge from the last and we're just gonna see how that works for us and then correct from there. Try to use the strongest masking tape you can find. Like that. All right, so I have this one gently placed, uh, taped in place. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna slide my foot in. I see immediately that it's a little wider than I need, so I can tuck it in more on this side. And probably a little more on each side because I don't need quite such a little pocket there. Although now might be a good time to slide your heel underneath and see if that changes anything. It'll make a small change. I also noticed that the 
footbed is longer than it needs to be. I kind of knew that would happen. So maybe at this point I'll mark that I could lose another centimeter for now. So I'm going to make a few corrections. I'm going to tape this side in tighter, maybe bring in both sides of tape just a little bit, and then I'm going to look at it. Okay, so now I really like how this is fitting. It feels cozy and snug, but not at all tight, and I can wiggle my toes. Um, there's a tiny bit of space on either side here, but that might be nice for walking. Um, maybe I could pull this one in a little bit more. I'm gonna do the same to the other. I'm gonna tweak the tape and make it really nice. I'm actually noticing that this inside piece extends back further than this, so I actually might trim like a centimeter off this side and, and tape it snugger, and that, that will probably be perfect. And I'm also gonna um, trim off that extra length at this point. So I think I um, adjusted the toe to fit just right, but let's check it out. Yeah, I really like that. Um, my big toe's right out there. Got room, about half inch back here, plenty of room. Um, so now with the heel slid underneath, I can mark where the back strap's going to land. So the way we built this is the front is sort of like a shoe, it's wrapping around the footbed, but the back is gonna be more like a sandal, it's gonna drop into some slots that we're gonna create now. Um, so this way you have half shoe, half sandal, and we can learn both techniques. So with my knee just cent centered over my heel, as if I'm standing, I'm wrapping this around my ankle tightly and it's landing just below my ankle bones here. You can go above. It's totally up to you. I think people overestimate um, the rubbing of an ankle bone, but you know, you know yourself. Um, so maybe I'll just drop it right about there. Yeah, right there. So I'm making sure it's all really snug and then I'm just following these down the tabs down to that footbed. And then I'm gonna mark with my awl just about a centimeter or three eighths of an inch inside. So where it's landing, but just I'm marking a dot just inside where I want to create a slot for it to drop into. The same on the other side. some limbo 
Yeah, okay. So I should have four dots. One there, one there, one there, and one there. And now I'll click those out and show you how to make the slots. All right, so I have my four dots marked. I just marked one of my shoes, not the second one, because I'm gonna just punch these out and then I'm going to replicate these dots on the other one, I'll show you that. Um, and I like to use the very smallest hole on your hole punch. And I think it's helpful to put scrap on the back. And make sure these are decently inward from the very edge. You don't want to create your slots super, super close to the edge of the shoe where it's going to get sanded. You know, you want them to be a healthy bump in from the edge. And then to transfer these to the other side, we can just go back to back um, and use a pencil, making sure everything is aligned how we mean it to be. Looks good to me. And all will work as well. kind of see this and it's okay to punch these from the opposite side okay we cut punched our dots now we need to cut some slots uh, you might want to use your pencil to draw lines as a guide for yourself. I usually freehand it, but what we're going for here is two parallel lines, the same uh, width as the dots you cut, and this is going to create the negative space that the strap, strap is going to drop through. So draw the lines. And these are just going to naturally follow the outside of the sole. So if it's super straight like this, then your line will be straight. If you're making a sandal and you're doing your toe strap, it's probably going to be kind of curved around just like the contour of the footbed, you know. So follow that curve of the footbed. So my knife is short again and my hand is grounded. And I'm even going to use my pinky finger as like a little guide and I'm going to take the tip of the knife on this side of the dot and I'm going to pull towards the other dot but I'm going to stop short then I'm going to cut the same line a little deeper and maybe a third time to make sure I'm going all the way through but each time I stop short then I do the parallel line same way light deeper and deepest and then I flip this around and I'm going to complete these cuts. It's kind of awkward if this is still attached but you just meet up with your original cut lines. This way you have so much more control because you're pulling your cuts and you're not trying to stop on a dime. Um, so it should come out like that. Sometimes you have to pull it out or cut the back but it should create just like a perfect slot there. And this doesn't actually need to be very well done because once you drop your strap into place, it becomes quite invisible. You don't really see the outside. You don't really see the inside. So you can just take some pressure off yourself and just cut them.
So now that you've cut out your slots, we can drop the ankle piece into place. We don't know exactly how we want this to fit yet, of course, um, but you gotta start somewhere. And if you have a hard time pulling it into place, like I just did, sometimes you can uh, trim a strap end at like a slight angle and that'll make it a lot easier. Or you just send one corner in first and kind of force it through like that. And don't worry if the strap going through isn't as big as the slot, you know, because we probably wanted it to rest at an angle. That's probably why we marked the slot that, at that length. So don't overthink it yet and, and get worried like, oh, my, my slot's too long um, because we're going to mess with it and make it just right. So now I'm going to move to the stool and start taping this underneath to get the fit just the way I want it to be. And I'll start with one and then I'll make the other one uh, symmetrical. All right. Um, so I'm going to slide this on and just tuck these tabs underfoot and slide my heel into place and check it out. Um, huh, it's kind of okay right off the bat, but um, what could I fix? I find that this side out here is kind of reaching further than this one, so that's an adjustment I want to make. I want them to be as symmetrical as possible. Um, so maybe I will kind of pull this one back and this one forward and see if that did it. Um, generally, my feelings about symmetry are that you want it, everything to be as symmetrical as possible, but ultimately the symmetry comes from the left and the right being next to each other. So sometimes one shoe itself doesn't need to be perfectly symmetrical. It's up to you though. Okay, that's looking better. Um, I don't know if you could see it front straight on. <laughs> um, I actually might take a scissors and trim a little edge over here to make it a little more like this side. But it's feeling really good. Um, if there's ever a little pucker, like here, there's almost one, you would just take the tab underneath right there and tuck it in extra. So let me show you. You know, like that. So I'm going to tape these where they are now, um, just to double check everything. But ultimately, you're going to slice them so they meet in the middle um, and don't overlap. fold it to encourage it to stand up straight. And if it helps to play with your little straight Mary Jane straps at this point, you can grab those and pretend that they're connected. But I really like how that's feeling and fitting. So I think I'm happy with that and I'm gonna work on the other one. Okay, so I taped both up uh, in a way I think fits well, and now I'll show you what I was looking for. Um, and if you want to put your little heel unit underneath to check everything out, the inside and outside aren't completely identical, but I think it's okay because um, once I have the buckle here, and this is gonna be here, it looks uh, pretty good to me. So I think that this tape job is great, and I'm gonna move forward. Um, so now that everything's taped, um, I wanna use the awl to reach on the inside of the sides of the toe area, just like about two inches here and here, just to define the 
line, it's kind of hard to explain, but like reaching in and just defining that line on the inside where the footbed lands in the toe pocket, because that's going to come in handy so we know where to glue up to. And it's not important to get it deep in the toe because that's where we just, we do it to up to the fold line. But since we brought this in extra on the sides more likely, um, you'll want that defined line in there. Anyway, now we'll outline everything underneath. Okay, so I like to use a bold marker that's gonna make it really clear where to scratch and glue. And I start by just outlining outlining what I can reach already without removing tape. So getting some of those lines and this line here is important. And now I'm kind of running into tape everywhere. So I'll start by removing this piece of tape and I can move it to a different position over here so it'll act kind of like a hinge and hold this in place. And this way I can get more of my line there. You're just making it really clear for yourself where you want to glue everything down and don't let it, don't let it move while you're making these marks. So full outlines, and then up here, we want access. So, you know, in the process of taping this really tightly, I had to cut some extra little triangle darts to allow these to lay flat. Um, so be sure to do that if, it, if it's really bulky somewhere. You can cut some small little darts and then tape all the tabs really flat that way. The most important parts are going to be back here where we adjusted the fit so much. The toe stuff is a little more obvious because it's just going to fit as snugly to the footbed as possible. All right, so now that you have everything really clearly outlined, we're gonna do the phase called scratching, which is so straightforward. It's just taking the awl and making texture on the underside for the glue to work better. So just rough up all the areas that you intend to glue all the way to the very edge. Um, if you have really slick leather, which I doubt, um, you'll need to do tons of scratching. If it's kind of like this, you just need a little bit of token texture and you'll need it both here and here so the bottoms of all the tabs and if it works to like make that supported that can be easier and then of course you want to do a little scratching on the inside of your toe pocket um, but since it is the back of the leather, it's already quite textured and hairy and dry. So that's another kind of freebie, um, but maybe a few extra scratches will help. And of course, go up to that line that we kind of sketched into the inside. Um, that's going to be your limit line for the gluing. I can see mine, but you probably can't see it ultra clearly, but it's like right here. Okay, so gluing, now we're ready to glue. I use this water-based leather glue. It goes by many names, EcoFlow, EcoWeld, Leather Bond. Um, anything like milky and intended for leather on leather well, works great. 
And I like to start on the inside of the toe pocket because it's enclosed. It takes a little bit more time to get tacky. So that's what I'll do first. And you kind of open it up to yourself and very carefully reach in the deepest part and just apply the glue to the bottom, you know, tabs, like the little teeth that are reaching all around. I'll show you the inside in a second. And the way this glue works is you put it on both surfaces you want to adhere to each other and then you wait at least five minutes for it to go from white to clear and to, to make sure it's tacky and ready to join you just touch it and if it comes away on your finger it's not ready but if it is clear and doesn't come away on your finger it's ready to bond so and then pay attention to that line on the side that you created so the inside looks sort of like this You can probably tell by now that I'm not a perfectionist. Okay, when you have waited at least five minutes, maybe 10, but whenever it gets clear and there's no more white, um, it's probably ready to join. See, I'm touching it and it's not coming off on my finger. <clears throat> so I'm going to, maybe I'll start with this easier part and just put these tabs down. Just be sure to put them down exactly where you intended them to land and not where they're just naturally falling down, but you know, follow your own guidelines and just press really firmly with your fingertips. We'll hammer and compress them later. You can get rid of the tape now. And then for the toe piece, so this glue is really strong and, and it wants to only connect once, so don't allow it to touch until you're ready. Do you know what I mean? So I like to slide this as deep as it can go seriously like you don't want it connecting if it's shallower than the deepest possible way because it'll screw you up later so make sure it's all the way slid in and then slowly kind of approach the surface here and just make sure that the toe part is really um, tightly grabbing, you know, not creating any bump, bumps or along the edge, like you want it really tightly holding around all the sides. And then I'll just focus on one side at a time. So maybe I'll start back here. I'm going to take a look at this side line, make sure it's buried. Follow my own lines as best as I can. <laughs> you know? And then any um, bulge like this, we'll just hammer it flat eventually, so don't worry about it. Just kind of press it together. And now I'm gonna work on this side, following that internal line I made. Oh, I guess I overshot it a little. Oh well.
Okay. So it's all kind of massaged into place. It's not too late once we do both of these to slide them on and check the fit and correct it. So, you know, this is just tentatively pressed into place. We can slide it on and if something's too loose, we can still pull it up, tighten it and press it down and hammer it in the corrected position. Sometimes you don't even need to add glue, but you might want to add a little glue and time and then press it in the corrected position. But we'll try it this way and I'll join this one and then we'll check them out. Okay, so I just uh, stepped into these um, freshly glued shoes and I'm testing them out and checking them out and making sure nothing needs to be adjusted. Um, they feel really good and the backs I have no complaints with. So I think I'm going to um, hammer them. There's two ways to compress all these uh, surfaces. One is to, to wear them and kind of stomp on them. <laughs> you know, because your feet are on the inside doing all the pressing. And then the other is to uh, hammer them on a shoe anvil. So if you have a shoe anvil, great. And uh, I'll show you how to use that. So um, if you do have an anvil or a shoe anvil, then great. And I'll show you how to use that. Um, if you don't, sometimes you can just hammer on a flat surface some areas, uh, like you can reach these inside areas where the tabs um, connect, and even like here and here. Um, you know, just areas you can reach easily with the hammer without hurting the shoe in any way. Um, but if you have one of these tools, you can slide it on like this. And just every area you're planning to hammer, make sure it's um, really flat against the anvil and it's not you know, moving, it's not hovering half on the anvil and half on, on midair. And then if you hammered, you would indent the footbed really badly. So make sure each hammer hit is fully supported underneath by the anvil. As you move around, just make sure the area you're focusing on is supported. All right, so now that everything is hammered or pressed into place, we can solve the problem of the issue of like there being uneven surfaces underfoot. So you want it to feel super smooth underfoot. So you might want to try them on just on flat ground before doing this skiving step and see where do you even feel any of those uh, little bumps or ledges, you know. You might only feel them like around the ball of your heel here and the balls of your toes here, but we do want to just take down all these edges to make them as smooth as possible so that you don't feel it and so it joins really seamlessly with the outsoling. So I take a knife and roll it out long, like four blades long, and I'm going to take my non-dominant hand and slide it inside the toe like this because that keeps it out of the way, out of harm's way. And also I can use my fingertips on the inside to create pressure that I'm cutting against. And that makes it a lot easier. And I like to work cross-legged in, in my lap and I get my own thumb out of the way by resting it on the blade. So there's no, nothing really I can cut. And so I'm, see I'm pushing up against the area I'm gonna focus on first. And I'm just shaving the leather towards the center 
to make it go from 100% leather here to zero here. And I want that to happen gradually. And it's kind of just a, a new learned trick that will take some time to develop. So go slow, be patient, work in one little area at a time, and just use your feeling fingertips <laughs> to make sure that this is a smooth transition. Let go. And notice how I'm using the low part of the blade, not the tip, um, to get the angle just right. Um, you know, sometimes the tip is not the sharpest part of the knife at this point, um, although that's a good lesson. You, you should probably trim your knife right now because you want a really sharp knife will help you do better skiving work. And just constantly change the angle for yourself depending on which area you're working on. You know, readjust so that you're pulling towards yourself. And you don't really want to skive anywhere near the outside here. You're just making sure all these inner areas are smoothly transitioning. And then you want to do these three edges, but you never want to sky this edge, right? Because that's going to be the really strong part that you want 100% of. So just the edges that are not clinging to the sides. <laughs> Okay, we're almost there. Uh, so I finished skiving both undersides and I think they are satisfactory and looking smooth. I wanted to mention that if you are intimidated by skiving and want to use a different technique, you could um, just insert pieces of leather in the negative space areas like back here, all around here. Instead of taking away, you would just add to create a smooth surface. And that is what I call adding a midsole. And it helps to have a shoe anvil and some scrap leather and you get that wet and you can take the impression. I explain it in the book, of course. <laughs> um, so that's another way. Or if you're working with thin enough leather and it's not uncomfortable, you can just do a tiny light skiving job and move on. Um, so you have a lot of options. Okay, so now I'm ready to join the heel blocks to the bottoms of the soles. Um, so I want to compare my upper with these outsoles because remember we made the outsoles extra big just in case we needed that room and we were using the last to make our footbed pattern so I'm noticing right now that it's way longer than we need. So that's a good thing to take note of at this point because we don't want to join the heel way back here and then have to sand off all that heel, you know? So before I start joining the heel to all these layers, 
I'm gonna cut the outsole down to mimic more of like the upper. Uh, so let me grab a pencil. So I still want it to be like on the long side to have plenty to work with, but I'm gonna cut it down to be right there. Um, I'm gonna do that to the other one. And then I can cut these with a knife very patiently, maybe get them wet. It'll get sanded later. Okay, and that way we know it's pretty much the size we're going for, and now we can line this up to the back of the heel, make sure it's not going askew, and I'm going to take my awl and make a groove right there, because we're going to create texture all here and all here so that we can glue these two together, and same with the other one, of course. So. Scratching, deep scratches. Um, deep grooves is more important than frequency, so <laughs> make sure they're really deep. Because this is the slick leather, um, and we want this, this to join really well. So I like to do cross-hatching shapes. Um, all the way to this line, but try to not go over the line. And the most important area to scratch is really just like the outer perimeter edge of all these things, because that's the area that someday, with a lot of wear and tear and dirt, might start to want a gap, you know? So just don't skimp on these edges. Make sure they're really textured. Okay, now that I'm all scratched, we're ready to glue these together. Same glue as before, because it's leather on leather. And just same rules as before. Put it on both surfaces, allow it uh, five whole minutes at least to become tacky. And you'll watch it go from white to clear. Once it's clear, you might touch it and see if it comes off on your finger. And if it doesn't, it's tacky and ready to join but be sure to carry the glue all the way to the edges where it's most important. And if your heel and sole don't match up completely perfectly, that's okay because this whole outside area is gonna get sanded at the end, so don't worry too much about that. All right, they look ready to join to me. So um, I'm just gonna pay attention to this front line and let everything else fall where it may. And press with my fingertips. And then I'm going to hammer these together. And I think it's smarter to hammer the thin onto the thick 
and you would do this over the floor or over a table leg on your sturdy work surface or over an anvil if you have it. Like that. And then, um, just so we're not only relying on glue, oh, this corner is not very good. Yeah, if there's any lift off, like just give it a few more whacks with the hammer. Okay, and then I like to put a few nails through the top into the heel. And I just put one kind of back here. And then I like to do one in each front corner. Just make sure you're going into the heel block and not out that way. So deep pilot holes with your awl, and then some small pointy nails that of course are just going to go in and stay in. And sometimes you can tell a nail is that's the intention if there's little dashes, like ridges. So I place it in the pilot hole, make sure I'm over the table leg. and go until it's totally flush. All right, now that I've joined the heels to the outsoles, we can kind of assess, uh, get ready to join the outsoles to the uppers. Um, because the front is closed and the back is open, we can have easy access to sand the back half um, once it's joined, but we have to have the front half perfectly sanded before we join it. So it's sort of weird, but basically I encourage you to sand the front half um, and then we'll join them, and then we'll sand the back half. Um, if you don't have a sander, you could just um, make sure to use your knife and really clean up the front half's edges. Remove any pen lines, make sure it's not too wide, um, that sort of thing. But if you do have a sander, I would encourage you to bring this to the sander now and just kind of clean up that edge and make sure it's totally the shape of your upper. So I'm looking at this one and you know you want this to come all the way to the edge of the shoe like you know maybe even exceed the edge like by a millimeter. And so now that that's there I think there's a little extra right here where there's still some pen line and a little bit extra in the width here. So I'm just going to use my pencil to mark that. And that's like a little note to me that I definitely want to sand that area down a little and this area down a little. And just overall I want to, you know, smooth out the whole front edge. So it's a quick sanding process just um, you can watch me go do it. And I'm going to check out this one too, and we'll go sand just the toes of the outsoles.
Okay, so now I have sanded the front halves of these outsoles, and now they're much more good looking and more faithful to the shape of my shoe. So I'm checking it out. Um, but there is one more thing I like to do, which is um, to trim this little hairy edge that is a result of sanding and just get that to kind of be as clean as possible. So using a scissors or sometimes a knife will give you the best access. Um, you know, just clean that edge up as much as you can. Okay. And then once you've done that, um, you're going to line these up and kind of place the outsole on the upper where you want it to eventually live. So not too far forward, so it's extended past, not too far in, that would look bad. You know, you want it to meet up right at the sweet spot. And make sure it's not going askew back here, right or left. And once you have that and you're gripping it tightly together, take your awl and just engrave a little or indent a little line on your toe piece actually. And that's going to just let you know where to scratch up until and where to glue up until. It only needs to be on the toe piece because as soon as we hit um, the end of that, then it just meets up with the footbed. So it's hard to see, but there is a groove carved in all around here. And then that's where we know where we have to scratch. So you can add some deep grooves all the way up until that line, but never past that line. But we're going to now scratch the entire bottoms. So up until that line, and then the entire flat part here. So in addition to scratching the undersides of your uppers, you also need to give some extra scratches to the tops of your outsoles. Um, so you can do that with your awl, you know, um, or if you have a rougher tool, that's really fast, a uh, fast way to scratch a large area. And of course you want to make it scratchy all the way to the very edge. Now you're ready to glue the entire bottom of your upper and the entire tops of your outsoles all the way to the edge, of course. Um, and just do like a thick, even coating. And then I'll say it, this is the last time we're gluing at all, so I'll say it again. Give the glue five minutes to become tacky and go from kind of white to clear. Um, <clears throat> and of course you want to put glue on both surfaces that you're going to glue together, so not just one. And then my trick for doing the upper is like, just be very careful about bringing the glue all the way to that line, that groove that you made with the awl. But once you do that, you can kind of just fill in the gaps more carelessly.
Um, so two things about gluing I wanted to mention is if you have just synthetic glue, like the kind of chemically shoe glue, that'll totally work for all these steps, no problem. Um, and the other is if you live in a cold climate and the glue is taking a while to get tacky, you might want to hold these in front of a heater for a few minutes or blast them with a heat gun or a hair dryer and that'll help the glue become really tacky. Um, okay, so I think I'm ready to join. I'm just going to cradle it in my lap and start at the tiptoe and lead the whole outsole backwards. I'm just covering all of my scratch lines. And making sure it's not veering one way or the other too much. And then I'm just going to press it together really well. And then we'll hammer it on an anvil or I'll slip my feet into it and walk around and try to compress the layers that way. But either way, it's gonna be a combination of hand pressing, your own feet in the shoe and some hammering. After pressing the layers together really well, um, if you have a shoe anvil, let's hammer it with that. And of course, you want every hit uh, with your hammer to be supported on the underside by the anvil. Okay, so I just dusted, I mean, I just, uh, <laughs> I just sanded the back halves of these and um, I tried to do it in a timely way for the sake of the video so it's not quite as perfect as I would like, but you probably noticed I'm holding the shoe with two hands and I'm just slowly rubbing it against the round protruding end of the sander until it's smooth and all the layers are completely even. Um, it could probably use a little bit more work, but you get the gist. <laughs> um, and then I even nicked this tiny spot here with the sander, so that happens. Um, to me, it's not such a big deal. You can oil it and you'll probably forget all about it. Um, it's just a tiny spot. But, um, you're left with kind of a lip of leather along the top edge here that's not that good looking, of course. So we want to clean that up with a combination of the knife and the scissors. I use the scissors on the round heel area because you can kind of get a good angle 
I just use it at a 45 degree angle and just trim away. Um, and then I take that same bevel and I carry it forward with the knife. Just to make that edge look finished. Like that. Oh yeah, and the shoes will be dusty, so you might want to use a paintbrush or something to get rid of all the sawdust. Um, like that. And then I'll trim this one up. And then we can add our buckling straps. Okay, so we're getting there. Um, my advice is to just work on the fit of the straps on one of your shoes. Get that just right, and then we'll just replicate it onto the second shoe. So um, here is the shoe on my foot. Hardware always goes on the outside of the foot because you never want to click the hardware on the inside of your foot with the other foot. Um, and I like to place this buckle way back here um, and have this kind of, so then the buckle's off your foot. Does that make sense? Rather than having it like be right there on your foot. Um, so you can play around with the angle that is ideal for you, but I'm just going to tape it at the angle that I like it on both sides, kind of gently, um, so the tape doesn't leave a mark on the leather. And then that way I'll know where I want to um, punch little ovals to let these straps come through. So. For instance, um, maybe if I wanted that there, I might you know, put that there. And then kind of feed this through to get a sense of where it's going to land. And really, whatever looks best is best. So. <laughs> You know, you don't want it super high on your ankle here. You don't want it really low there. You want it in that good spot here. And then this piece of tape, let go. Okay, so now I'll bring it to the table and show you how to cut these slots. Okay, so I like the look of when the strap pops out of a little oval in the main strap. Does that make sense? So I'm going to just mark a dot here and here and create a little dash underneath, and this is going to come out of that. You'll see what I mean. But I made a dot there and there. And same on the other side. So I might make that dash about here, here. And take these away. And then just like the slot we made for the buckle, you can either click these out with dots and connect them with um, your knife, or you can use a punch, an oval punch, you know, over an anvil and punch it out. Um, so either way, we'll punch two uh, ovals on either side, and then we'll mimic it on this shoe and do the same on this one.
Okay, so now we have our little slots ready. Um, we know we want the buckle on the outside. Um, doesn't totally matter where this lands. I like it to land within this zone. So right about there. I'll tape it again just to make sure the angle hasn't shifted. And same with this side. And it's best to leave this overly long at the beginning. We can always trim it later. So I'll just try this angle. And then I'll just check it on my foot and then we'll put rivets right back here and right back here. Okay, so the angle is great. I'm gonna move the rotary punch to the third to smallest setting. One, two, three. And punch a hole through both layers right back here. And right back here. Okay. And then the post goes on the back, the cap goes on the top, and then you hammer it flat. So then you can pull, cut off the back of the straps that's excessively long and pull off the tape. And they're all ready. Oh, and then of course we want to add all the holes for the various fits. So you'll try it on again. I like to just mark my ideal fit with a pencil and then I do another two dots on either side about a centimeter away from those to give me some variables. Um, and I use the second to smallest hole on the hole punch. Okay, so now um, the straps are in a secure position and we can weave this through. And what I meant by finding the ideal spot for the buckle is um, just make sure you have enough space here for your leg to flex. And uh, you don't want it super tight. And then just mark with your pencil where the tongue of the buckle lands. And that's just a guess. And it doesn't really matter because we're gonna do a whole, a little uh, tighter and a little looser on both sides, maybe two on both sides, so you'll have uh, lots of variables. Um, but that works for me, so let me mark the tighter one, centimeter there, looser here, and I'll punch those out um, at the table. Okay, second to smallest hole, a little scrap on the back. <laughs> hmm, that's a tough one. Okay. All right, so now all that's left to do is to oil up the shoes completely 
um, and that's completely optional. Um, you could leave them as is and they'll develop a darker uh, color and patina with a lot of sunshine and um, oils and dirts and just time will make them darker. But you can rub like a kind of balm wax oil um, into them all over. It could be um, along the edge of the soles, the whole upper, the footbed, even the sole can be conditioned. Um, so I might show you how to do that um, in case you're curious. Okay, so I tried them on with socks, um, although they'd be great without, but um, I thought my feet were not looking very great. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm really happy with them. They, they're comfy. I don't feel any of the unevenness underfoot. Um, I'm using the middle dot on the buckle and they're snug on the back. Um, I do want to oil them, so I think I'll do that soon. And then I forgot to mention the straps are still really long, but it's totally up to you how long you keep them. But I think I'll keep it shorter than that. Whoa. Um, maybe around there. And yeah, I hope you really enjoyed this process and uh, learned something from it.